you look at the aim itself, it says Kipsers will be able to write perpendicular and parallel equations through a point and graph. Again, just like it has been for the past couple days, the graphing part is subsidiary. Um, it's extra. It's the thing that we're going to do to help check our work. Um, our main focus is really on making sure that we get the equations correct. You'll also notice that this aim is the same as it has been for the past couple of days. It's because we're doing the same things, we're just given different information. So looking at today's work, I've already mentioned it once today, what is different about these problems as compared to the problems we've done over the past couple days? What's different about the given information? Obviously some of you are still writing the aim, so I'll give you a second to think about that. What is different about these problems as compared to the problems we've done over the past couple of days? I've already given several hints about it. Rebecca. All right, so our equation is given to us. We've had equations given to us. We've had graphs of lines given to us. We've had a slope given to us. It doesn't really matter. The difference here is the information that's given to us. This time we're given an equation, but it's not in slope-intercept form. So if I want to find a line that is parallel to this equation, I have to know the equation's slope. Is there any way to immediately look at this equation and say, I know the slope is blah, 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 blah? Kip yes or kip no. Can you immediately tell the slope of this equation? I'm not getting any participation, so I'm not sure that we're ready to answer this question. Can I immediately look at this equation and know the slope of this equation? No. So I need to put this into a form of an equation where I would know the slope. What is the form of the equation that we would like to put this in? And why? Slope intercept. So I need to solve for y. So I have 5y. This is our old equation. Oops. So I'm going to label this side as my old. And we're going to leave room for over here for our new. So you're going to want to split that space. And you're going to have to write pretty small today um, to fit all of our work on our teacher time. So for our old equation, we have 5y, leave change switch, plus negative 3x is equal to negative 20. What is it that I need to do first to get this into slope-intercept form? Janelle, what do I need to do to get this into slope-intercept form? Add, positive Add a positive 3x to both sides. Perfect. So after that, we end up with 5y is equal to 3x plus negative 20. Still don't quite have this in slope-intercept form, so we can't quite tell the slope of this. We need to go through one more step to get this into slope-intercept form. Katie? Divide both, divide both sides by 5. Now, recalling that we need to divide the entire side by 5. That's why we use the fraction bar to run the entire length. So we're going to get y is equal to 3 fifths x plus negative 20 divided by 5 is negative 4. So what is the slope of our original equation? Malcolm, what is the slope of our new equation? Hold up. Three fifths. They're the same because they are parallel. So our new equation is going to be y equals three fifths x plus b. We don't know what b is. We're not given a direct y intercept. We are given a point on the line. So what can we use? How can we use that point on the line to find our y-intercept? One. Plug it in. So my y is three. My x is negative five. Six. 
This is a bad date, so 3 equals negative 3 plus b. Marlon? Add, 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 add a positive 3 to both sides. Tells us that 6 is equal to b. We can now write our, the entirety of our new equation. I'm going to go all the way back from this original. I'm going to plug in my 6. y is equal to 3 fifths x plus 6. So that is our equation of a line that is parallel to 5y minus 3x is equal to negative 20 and goes to the point negative 5, 3. says to graph both lines below, so I'm going to look at my original line, y equals 3 fifths x plus negative 4. That has a y-intercept of negative 4. Slope of 3 fifths, rise 3, run 5. Slope of 3 fifths, rise 3, run 5. And then I'm going to take my straight edge, draw my line from my original, And then I want to look at my old equation, or my new equation, 3 fifths x plus 6, so that's a y-intercept of 6. Rise 3, run 5. I'm out of space to rise 3, run 5, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go down 3, back 5 to get that third point for my graphing. The third point really just makes your graphing more accurate. Not entirely necessary, but again, it makes your graphing more accurate, and we use our accurate graphing to help us check this work anyway. So if I want to check this work, the two things that I need to check, number one is do my lines seem to have the right relationship? Okay, yeah, these are parallel lines. These appear to, appear to look parallel. The second thing I want to check is we're told that the point negative 5, 3 should be in this line. So I go over negative 5 and up to 3, and sure enough, I showed that that point was on the line. That assumes that everything's correct. That check is super important for our work today. Because we had to do some solving to get the original equation, that one point of check checks to make sure that we got the original equation solved correctly, that we got the second equation um, with the right slope, and it checks that we got the second equation with the right y-intercept. Okay, so that one point of check, while it's so super easy, checks so many different things. All right, let's look at the next one. It says, write the equation of a line that is perpendicular to 2y minus x is equal to 4. Goes through the point 3, 6. So, I know my line is perpendicular. So that means I know something about the relationship between the slopes of these lines but I would need to know the slope of the original line first. Kip, yes or Kip, no. Do we already know the slope of the original line? Don't have 100% participation. Do I know the slope of the original line? I do not, okay? So I need to put this into a form that I would know the slope of the original line. How am I gonna do that? Nicole? Yeah, we want to solve for y. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to split up my space here just like you should. I'm going to be dealing with my old equation on the left. And then when I get a chance, I'll work with my new equation on the right. So my old equation was 2y plus negative 1x. That's just after the leaf change switch is equal to 4. Nicole says, I need to get y alone. Jose, what is the first step to get y alone? Uh, add, a add a positive 1x to both sides. Yep, add a positive 1x to both sides. 
leaves me with 2y is equal to 1x plus 4. Still don't have y alone. So Nia, what do I need to do now? Divided by 2. Remembering that I have to divide one side by 2, I have to divide the entire side by 2. 1 divided by 2, that's the fraction, 1 half x. Plus, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So my original equation is y equals 1 half x plus 2. What's the slope of my original equation, Madeline? And what is the slope of my new equation? Raisa, how'd you get negative 2? So she took the original slope, she flipped it over, and she also... Raisa, what else did you do? Yeah, you switched the sign. It went from a positive to a negative. So our new equation is y equals negative 2x plus b. Are we directly given the y-intercept? Kip yes or kip no. Are we directly given the y-intercept? No, we're not. Um, so we need to solve for the y-intercept. Maureen, what do I need to do to solve for the y-intercept? Okay, so we want to plug in this point above. Now, what I heard you say was that you were going to plug in 3 for y. Yeah, 6 for y. Making sure we remember that um, this is always a xy pair where the y is the second one. It's a very common mistake, even for people you know better, um, just to quickly put it in there and put it in there wrong. I've done the same thing at least twice in the past week. All right, so now we just need to solve. 6 is equal to negative 6 plus b. Add 6 to both sides. And we get our equation is y equals negative 2x plus the b we just found is 12. So that comes all the way back. We just plugged in our 12. Now we want to graph the two equations. So the first one's easy to graph. 1 half x plus 2. So it's y-intercept of 2. Rise 1, run 2. Rise 1, run 2. And take straight edge. And the second one's a little bit more difficult to graph because we have a y-intercept that isn't really helping us. It has a y-intercept of 12. So what can we do if we don't really want to use this y-intercept? Madeline. Yeah, use the original point that was given to us. Uh, we're told that the point 3, 6 is on the line. So let's go ahead and use 3, 6. Our slope is negative 2, so rise negative 2, run 1. Rise negative 2, run 1. We actually have a shared point here. And now we want to check a couple of things here. Number one, do our lines have the right relationship? They're supposed to be perpendicular, and they are indeed perpendicular. So yes, they do have the right relationship. The next question is, are the two points that we can check are they in the right place? Well, 3, 6, we started with 3, 6, um, so we can't really check that. And what we didn't check is we didn't start with the y-intercept. So we can check 
Not necessarily that that y-intercept is perfect, but at least that it seems like it's in the right place. So if I extend my axis up, it looks like that's probably going to be about the right place for a y-intercept of positive 12. Checking the y-intercept and the point are going to be what's going to really check your work. Questions about that? Any questions about this entire problem? All right, we'll do one more. Okay, looking at this equation. I need to find a line that is perpendicular to this equation. Do I already know the slope of this equation? Kip yes or kip no, do I already know the slope of this equation? Okay, most of you are telling me no. So what do you think we need to do? Javier. Okay, so he's telling me to distribute what for what purpose? What are you what's your end goal here? Javier. Get it into what form? Slope intercept form, right, because that's going to tell us the slope. So I'm at this point, and I don't have y alone yet, so what do I need to do to get y alone if I really want this in slope intercept form? One. Add a positive three to both sides. Now when we add a positive three, we're going to be adding our fractions together here. So negative three plus three. By the way, still need to create that space. Negative two thirds x plus eight thirds plus, I'm oh, sorry, this is messy. Plus three over one. Y equals negative two thirds x and I need to change these fractions so they have the same denominator before I can add them. So what do I need to do? Katie, what do I need to do? How? What do I need to do to change the common denominator? What about the one? What about it? Okay, multiply by 3 over 3. So that's going to give me 9 thirds, which gives me a total of 17 thirds. So we now know this original equation. This is our new or our old equation. We know the old equation as y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 17. So what is the slope of the old equation? Christopher, what is the slope of the old equation? Negative two thirds. Okay, so Kenneth, what is the slope of the new equation? And how did you get that? Cool. He got the reciprocal by flipping the fraction and he changed it from a negative to a positive. So our new equation is going to be y equals three halves x plus b. Kevin, are we directly given a y-intercept? So what do we need to do? Can't graph it yet. I don't have the y-intercept. Sarah, help him out. What do we need to do to find the y-intercept?
Yeah, plug in our point. So we have 4 is equal to 3 halves times negative 6 plus b. It's going to give me 4 is equal to negative 9 plus b. 9 plus 4 equal to negative 9 plus 9 plus b. 13 is equal to b. So our new equation is y equals 3 halves x plus 13. Now we need a graphing. Now the graphing is going to get a little bit dicey here, especially when it comes to graphing the first one. The first one has a y-intercept that we don't really like. Is there anything I can do about that, though? Is there anything I can do about this original equation, having a y-intercept that we don't like? No, because we don't know any points on that line. This point that's given to us is only for the second line. So we have to actually graph this. This is 17 over 3. If we do that division, that's going to give me 5.6 repeating. So I'm going to come onto my graph, and this is just going to have to be an estimation. So I'm going to go up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0.6 repeating, that's going to be more than halfway, but not all the way to 6. I can count my slope from here, though. Uh, my slope is negative 2 thirds. Negative 1, negative 2, run 1, 2, 3. So I'm ending up basically in the same place right here. Above the 0.5, below the line, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, and there's our three points. So we're going to take our straight edge, we'll get our graph for these three points. graph, I mean, use the marker. So that's our original equation. Now that's just an estimate. That's not going to be quite perfect. But we can graph our second equation, which also has a y-intercept that isn't very useful. Is there anything that we can do about this y-intercept not being one that we like? One. Yeah, for this one, we can use the point because we know that point is for this line. Um, so I'm going to go to negative 6, 4. So over negative 6 and up to 4. And my slope is a positive 3 half. So rise 3, run 2. Rise 3, run 2. Barely fits on there. Take my straight edge. Draw my line. So it looks like I almost needed to extend my line just a little bit further, but we want to check our relationship here. Uh, first and foremost, are these lines appropriately related? In other words, are they correctly parallel or perpendicular? Yeah, this is supposed to be a perpendicular line. I can fit a 90 degree angle in there, and that's just right. The other thing we want to check is we want to check, uh, since we use the point, we want to check our y-intercept. So our y-intercept should look like it hits at about 13. And sure enough, it does look like it hits at right about 13. So that's our check. Any questions about our work for today? That means you should be able to come up with key points for me really quickly. 
There's actually really only one key point that I think we really need today that differentiates this work from the work we've done the past couple days. Rebecca. Yep. If the original equation is not in slope-intercept form, change it, change it to slope-intercept form.